Next, let's look at an example of the radioactive isotope strontium-90. Strontium is the 14th most common element found in Earth. The most common naturally occurring form of strontium is strontium-88, which is not radioactive. When uranium-235 undergoes nuclear fission from nuclear weapons or nuclear reactors, it produces strontium-90 as a byproduct. Interestingly, there are many practical applications for strontium-90. For example, it's used in stents placed in hearts to prevent the overgrowth of surrounding tissues to avoid blockages. Strontium-90 produces heat, which is useful to power ocean buoys and even interplanetary spacecraft. However, strontium-90 can also be absorbed from water and dairy products into the human body, where the body treats it like calcium. That means it can settle into bones and teeth. The body is able to excrete some of it in urine and feces, but around 70% still remains. The presence of strontium-90 increases the chance of cancer development in and around bones. It has a half-life of 30 years, so it continues to exist in our bodies and remains for around 300 years. From the years 1945 to 1963, the USA conducted 206 atmospheric weapons tests the Soviet Union, another 216, Britain, 7, France, 49. There was a study that was done in the late 1950s to the early 1960s to study the effects of nuclear fallout from the atmospheric nuclear weapons testing that was taking place at the time. Baby teeth were collected in the St. Louis area for years, resulting in 320,000 baby teeth being obtained. It turned out that children born in 1963 had 50 times the strontium-90 in their teeth than those born in 1950 when only a few nuclear tests had been conducted up to that time. Although the findings are quite startling, the overall effects of strontium-90 exposure on human health appears to be small, although the results are still being studied and debated. More importantly, this study played a significant role in convincing governments and leaders around the world to abandon atmospheric nuclear testing.